Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the software that you get on your Terramaster NAS. More precisely I want to talk about the F5221. We already did the hardware um, review a little while ago and now I want to show you guys the very latest version of Terramaster's software. Now just over a year ago I did a full review of their NAS operating system but as per what I keep telling you guys, Terramaster is probably one of the fastest evolving NAS brands that I've seen in a very long time. And the same thing goes for their NAS software. And it's up to now TOS, that's Terramaster Operating System, version 4. Now we've set up the NAS with a 4TB WD Red hard drive inside. And what I'm going to do is make my way into this device using the TNAS PC Assistant software. It's completely for free. It's available from Terramaster's website. And for those that have ever used a Synology or QNAP NAS, it is pretty comparable to that of Synology and QNAP software. There's the QNAP one on the front there, if we minimize that. Then we have the Synology one, and then finally we have the Terramaster software here in the middle. Probably needs a little bit of the design tweak, to be honest, compared to those, but it's still pretty damn good. We will, of course, be doing a software comparison with both Synology and QNAP in a later video. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys a few things. I'm, I've set this device up, but barely done anything with it. So the first part of this software review is going to be my initial feelings about TOS 4.0. Then I'm going to stop recording, set up the device for about an hour or two, use it, see some of its quirks. And then I'm going to tell you guys about more about it when it's set up. Because I've used one of these before and I have done full software overviews for it. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. I do recommend you check out my older video. But the TNAS software here that is just basically your assistant software, this isn't the user interface of your NAS, this will be on your client, PC or Mac device. From here you can browse the files on the NAS directly, log into the NAS or map it as a network drive. So that means you can deal with this device directly if you choose, just on a Windows or Mac file level. But for now let's make our way into this NAS. I um, probably didn't need to do that because I'm already logged in. But here we are on the desktop interface of our TOS NAS. And again, got to love it. It's got this nice thing on the side here. What you might see, and I hope this comes across in the frames per second of the recording, is it's lovely and fluid. It reminds me a lot of Synology's DSM platform. I don't know if you guys know much about Java and stuff like that. Again, I'm not too up on that side of things. What I will say is this is beautiful, HTML5 maybe, again I'm saying these words like I know what they mean. But on the right hand side it tells you real time information about the hardware and software and once again this device features the J3355 dual core 2.0 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.5 along with 2 gig of DDR3 memory that can be upgraded to 8 gig. So that's where we get system information there on the right hand side, we'll close that for now. On the left hand side we've already got some basic apps pre-installed so again you've got the file management tool there which again you utilize to access general files and folders on your NAS device very straightforward and again it is dynamic and reactive so you can right click and you've got options and those aren't the options there's the windows options there or chrome so it has its own copy paste etc make folder more and more if we might go into the control panel so let's face it, this is going to be where it's important. And the first thing I should mention is you do have to double click these icons to open them. I know that sounds like a really silly thing uh, to highlight, but a number of you out there who use touch systems, who use desktop systems, will probably wonder about that. And I know it might annoy a few of you. For me personally, I quite like it because I'm a Windows user. Creating new users, super easy. And again, I'm really excited to compare this against Synology's DSM platform and QNAP's QTS platform. So if we create a new user, let's see how long this takes. Let's call this guy Robbie. Give him the password. Let's be really imaginative and call him and call it password. Ah, so we need to go, oh, professional. That's password with a capital P. Again, we can move forward. We've created, we'll give him no storage limit for now. There's the user, make him an admin. Set the permission, say I can access everything. There we go, we've created our new user. And again, that was lovely and quick. And of course, users is if you've got staff or family and stuff like that. You can create bulk groups they have, whereby they have different login credentials and of course, different uh, permissions. Shared folders, so we can create a shared folder. And let's see if you can create a shared folder 
from within this interface. So if we go for new folder, can we create a shared folder here? It looks like maybe not for now. Maybe if we right click here on this side, it would look like we cannot create a new a shared folder inside the file directory. So not that's a little annoying, but not too bad, because to be honest, you're not going to create loads of shared folders anyway. Uh, network services, of course, if you want to discover um, the device on your localized network and for file exchange service, we want to need those fast files moving very, very quickly. Storage manager, again, a little underwhelming if it, on the, a previous TOS version, but what I would say is if you're not of a technical mind, you are going to love this because it is real straightforward and easy. But what I'm really impressed by is the fact that it supports Seagate Health, Iron Wolf Health Management. Now, I don't have a Seagate drive inside this. I only had a 4 TBWD red for spare, but I will be testing out WD Iron Wolf drives inside this device. And I'll tell you what, I am super pleased that this device supports that because I do use this regularly on some 6 dB Iron Wolves that I have that are coming up on a year and a half old. So it's nice that they've included that functionality there. And of course, smart tests as well. Bottom, RAID creation. I've only got the OneDrive inside, but of course we can create RAID. And it supports SSD cache as well, which again is a big, big deal for a brand that is considered to be rather budget. The fact that you can adopt SSD caching technology, because this 5-bay, you could chuck one or two SSDs in some of those extra bays and really have some fun. External storage for USB drives, of course. And moving forward into the general settings, these will be sort of standard ones. And of course, and it's nice to see you can indeed control the fan. So let's see if you can pick it up on the mic if I knock that fan up a little high. Bring that mic forward. Sorry about the clicking. And let's switch that back to low fan now. So again, super pleased that you've got that level of control on the fan straight off the bat. And with regards to the notifications and more, to me, this is all the options that you're going to need. I, I don't know why, um, you know, TerraMaster has such a bad rep with some of you guys. Because don't get me wrong, the chassis might look a little bit dated. But in terms of software, they give you what you want. And the service status and the notifications are all available straight off the bat too. And they do manage to keep things quite user friendly. I am looking forward to comparing this particularly against Synology's DSM. Because I think DSM is going to be better, particularly with their first party apps. But for DSM, you have to pay a lot, lot more. Anyway, so remote access is the ability to access your NAS from far away which means you want to be able to access it over the network or the internet. So this is where you would enable your remote access and you don't have to pay any extra in order to do it. It's very straightforward, very easy. And I would say that it's actually easier to do this on the other two brands. I do kind of wish when we do the comparison video that I have these separate tabs and I'm able to show you guys just how straightforward this is compared to both Synology and QNAP. So moving forward, we can look at the applications. Because at the top here, if we double click that TerraMaster logo, nothing seems to be happening. So maybe there's supposed to be a start menu in a previous iteration, but there definitely isn't now. On the bottom right, we can still access all of that real-time hardware information, which is nice. And of course at the top, we've got everything from our user account information and control, shutdown, restart, and of course, notifications for events. If we go into the applications, now we can look at what apps are really available to be downloaded and installed on our NAS. And I think this is where I'm going to fast forward things rather than you guys wait around and seeing which of these applications I'm going to download for you guys to see in operation on this NAS. But what I'm going to do is just quickly show you just how many there are. Now, don't get me wrong, there isn't the 80 or so that Synology have, or the 100 plus that QNAP have, but there's still quite a lot of applications there, and it's also worth mentioning that there are unofficial applications available too. So I'm going to install these and I'll see you in a sec. Just before I skip forward, I do want to take the opportunity, I just noticed something, just how easy it is to install the apps. Now, in previous iterations of TerraMaster software, installing applications when clicking install, left the, de uh, the device, much like a WD NAS or a Netgear NAS, having a little message in the middle of the screen, stopping you being able to access the device whilst you install applications. 
Luckily, this is not a feature on this TerraMaster, and particularly in version 4. You just click install, and that's it. The app's installing. You can install multiple apps like that. Elephant drive support, multimedia drive support, mouse server, they're all there. And again, one of the things I do want to talk about, and I hope I remember, is the fact that this device also supports background snapshots. And given that you can set BTRFS as your file system of choice on this, that is exceptionally useful. You can even look at this blue bar here behind the description to tell you how long the installation is going to take. We've got everything from the downloading application transmission, WordPress, I've installed a couple of CRMs and more. But once again, I am going to skip forward to when these applications are installed and I've had a chance to play with this device a little bit more. Right, so after a couple of hours of playing with the new TOS 4 on our F5221, I can tell you straight away off the bat, I'm really impressed with the TerraMaster operating system. Notwithstanding the fact that a number of key applications that a lot of you guys care about are featured on this device, but the execution of them is very, very good indeed. Now, you've got things like the Docker application, which allow you to run containered, smaller uh, instances of virtual sandbox environments so are basically like a VM but on a lesser degree something that Synology and QNAP do promote themselves but the fact that it's on quite a budget NAS here is pretty impressive indeed as well as access to a registry of existing container applications on the Docker App Center and again a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about today are currently available on Synology and QNAP's respective platforms but not at this price threshold and that's what's very very important indeed moving forward you've got dropbox sync elephant drive sync and other forms of synchronization with cloud pl platforms so if you do have space on an online platform again these third party ones google drive dropbox and more you can synchronize this nas with those platforms again both ways so you can back up the cloud to your nas or your nas to the cloud and again, lots of different options there. I will say that TOS does lack a lot of the finish and shine of Synology and QNAP's applications, but they more than make up for this on fluidity and the sheer depth of applications and stuff you can do at such you know, an affordable level. And I keep using that word affordable because I do believe it's important. This is you know, an affordable NAS and it's something that appeals to a number of you out there nice and quick and it is exceedingly responsive I don't know what I've clicked as the background but we're going to leave it there why not now moving forward you've got applications such as Plex Media Server and MB and these allow you to run media servers that can be accessed over the network and the internet on your devices again I'll say it for the last time these are just like the applications you get with your Synology or QNAP NAS because a number of them are third-party apps and they run very well indeed on this device. There's a mail server application to have a centralized platform of all your email addresses and your email clients all running from the NAS and a multimedia server that responds as um, your kind of media collection point over DLNA and more and you can obviously create different folders, uh, different directories and more for these to be picked up on your other devices in your local area network. Uh, snapshot support, as I mentioned earlier on in the video during the initial setup, means that you can create snapshots of your entire storage area in the background of the NAS. At the moment, I still need to create a storage area for that application, so we're not going to delve into that too deeply. There is support of third-party applications for um, customer relationship management applications such as VTiger and Sugar to run on this device and for those running small businesses or have large client databases they want to maintain on the NAS, you can install these applications from there. And once again, these applications are included free on the device, but it is worth bearing in mind that if these are trials, you will obviously only have access to the extent of the trial. I can remove that help thing there. Our clone gives you the ability to synchronize with those cloud platforms, but also with other NASs on the local network. And I will say, this is a hell of a lot more straightforward than that I found on Synology or QNAP. I am looking forward to comparing this against QTS and DSM to see how these individual applications compare. But I would argue that this, you know, is pretty good at this price threshold, and moreover, not too complex. It's very understandable, very legible. Now, let's talk about a few negatives. We can't just focus on the good side. For a start, 
I didn't really find a surveillance tool for IP cameras and more. And so with so many of you buying network attached storage devices for surveillance with IP cameras in the home or office environment, it's a bit of a shame that we don't have a surveillance application included on the TerraMaster NAS series. Next, another disadvantage, there wasn't a virtual machine manager. You've got the Java virtual machine, but unfortunately you don't have the same level of virtual machine support that you get from Virtualization Station on QNAP and Synology Virtual Machine Manager. Don't get me wrong, the hardware on this NAS is still pretty limited in terms of long-term virtual machine use, but the ability to access an application like that would have been appealing. Next, it's also worth highlighting quite strongly that TerraMaster does not have the range of first-party apps that the likes of QNAP NAS and indeed Synology, kind of the kings of the NAS first-party industry, have to offer. So none of your Synology chat, office, mail moments, none of your photo recognition applications and more. TerraMaster seems to give you a lot of fluidity to support third-party applications as well as beta applications and installing homebrew apps, but its own range of applications is a little lacking. You can definitely tell that the majority of the money when you spend money on a TerraMaster NAS goes towards the hardware rather than the software. But those faults aside, I still do argue that the TerraMaster NAS series, and particularly TOS, does the brand proud. And TOS 4.0 or 4.009 definitely can stand the test of time. We're going to compare it against the, software, uh, the DSM software on a Synology NAS and a QNAP NAS of very similar, if not identical, hardware, both on this desktop platform and, of course, the mobile applications too, because the mobile application for TerraMaster, TOS, has also been updated for both iOS and Android, so we'll see how they're compared. But, for me, both this and this NAS device you know, if you can overlook some of that first-party app support as well as the design of the TerraMaster NAS, which still leaves a little bit to be desired. It's a great little NAS brand and still one of my favourite brands out there if you're looking for something a little lower in price than Synology and QNAP, but way, way more fully featured than Netgear, WD, Drobo, Seekers and even Asus Store. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and stay tuned for more updates on the TerraMaster NAS series as we explore this brand more and more in 2019. Cheerio.